Hey, welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Latifat. I'm the host of the Money Feed MD show. This is where we talk about all things money and mindset because I truly believe that when we pair these two things together, it is pretty much impossible for us to not create wealth. So I hope you enjoy the show. Make sure you learn, make sure you take actions, and make sure you share the link to the show with all the humans in your life so that we can all start to do wealth together from the inside out. Enjoy this episode. Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Dr. Latifat. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another episode on the podcast. How are you doing? Seriously. So I'm doing fantastic because number one, I'm just doing well, period. But also because I'm recording this a week after my book launch. And uh, oh my goodness, first of all, guys, I have to say a huge thank you so much for all the amazingness that happened last week during the release of my book, Down With Broke, The Woman Physician's Guide to More Money and Less Hustle. I was mind blown by all the work that you guys did to get the book out there, to get the book, to celebrate with me. And honestly, I'm still defrosting and processing everything that happened during that week. But I want to say a huge, huge thank you. And as my way of saying a thank you, I want to also contribute to the body of work that already exists of how to launch and really write and launch a best-selling book because that's what you guys did. We made bestseller on Amazon within the first couple of, like within the first day. And that's a huge thanks to every single one of you guys that are listening. And if you're like, what are we talking about? We're talking about our book, the bestseller, Done With Broke. It's a book that I wrote for women physicians, but I've been getting feedback even from non-physicians. Uh, I have some men that I've read the book as well. And it really is digging into our relationship with money and how to, the secret recipe, in my opinion, of how to manage our finances, like the CEO that we are. And it's not about like doing things the old way or like bro finance and all that stuff. It's really about learning how to do it in a way that's different, in a way that's unique. And I've found that having a good relationship and changing our relationship with how we think about money and really learning the timeless principles around wealth building is the way to get there. And so that's what I wrote in this book for you guys. So if you haven't grabbed it yet, what the heck are you doing with your life? Go right now, stop, go to amazon.com type in down with broke and go buy your copy you will thank me later i'm seeing the reviews already if you already left a review and it's not showing up be patient takes about one to three days from what i'm seeing usually like two days but there was some that took a little longer um but if you read the book if you've loved the book and you haven't left a review on amazon yet please 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 go do that it helps other people get your opinion about whether they should buy this book or not and if you think this body of work is important if you learn something something by reading the book, then I really would love if you could leave us a review. So I'm excited about this episode today because I really want to give back to you guys because I do believe that most of you guys that are writing this, listening to this episode or watching this episode may decide that you want to have a book. Maybe you're already thinking about it and you know, you're like, okay, how should I do? What should I do? I want to share with you the stuff that I learned throughout this process and what I believe helped me in terms of writing the book that I love and also being able to market it. And again, marketing a book is a lifelong <laughs> thing. Like you go, to keep doing it um but at least i can share with you guys while this information is still fresh in my head about how i was able to go from where i started from to where i am today so for those that don't have a good background about me yet i'm dr latifat i'm a gi doc i'm also the founder of money fit md which is a platform that is committed to equipping and empowering women physicians to have money and have true financial freedom not like fake financial freedom but true financial freedom, which is a combination of money and the power of our mind. So that is what I do. And I do that through this podcast here that you're listening to. I do this through the Money Fit MD programs that we have, which is the Money Coaching School for Badass Women Physicians. This is a 12-month program 
focus towards women that want to wealth build. So it's towards buying ownership, organizing our finances, and it's really high level stuff. If you need help with the lower level things, we do do that as it comes up. But these women are, their eyes are on wealth building. It's like how to, you know, the top line, optimize the bottom line and really learn how they can live their life of freedom and create their own rich or wealthy life, right? That's what that's about. I also have a smaller program that most people don't know about yet because I haven't actually launched it or talked about it in like two years. Years, but there's been a lot of demand for it and I'm bringing it back. And this is our eight weeks course, which is called the Money Boss Academy. We are having women physicians go from wherever they are to becoming money bosses in eight weeks. And we do this by giving them the curriculum that they need, this high impact, high yield educational content. So that regardless of what you're starting from, whether you're like, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, or you're like, okay, I'm doing okay, but I need to learn the basics. If that's you, or maybe you're doing well and you're like, you just need to, I want to learn from you, Latifa, then I invite you to, you know, check it out. You can send us an email, moneyfitmdhelp at gmail.com, moneyfitmdhelp at gmail.com come um because i don't know when next we're going to be launching it um anyways depending on when you listen right now we are going to be having a cohort that is starting may 17th so if you want to be a part of that cohort make sure you send us an email urgently so that we can get you in it's eight weeks it's literally it has a potential to change your life i've taught this curriculum to dozens of women physicians and the feedback that i've gotten is like crazy ridiculous so if you want to learn money if you want to be a money boss in eight weeks that's how you do it so go check it out but send us an email you can send an email to money fit md help or you can go to my website contact me and we'll find a way to get you in we don't have a you know like a whole landing page for it and all that stuff we really are getting it to the people that need it people that want it and people that are in our community so if you're not in our community yet you may not hear about it you may not have known about it but send us an email and we'll get you in so those are the things that i do um, as my way of making sure that I help the next generation of women, we normalize these conversations around money and we really help women physicians live the life that we want. So back to the book, let's talk about that. So number one is why did I write the book? I wrote the book for multiple reasons, but the main reason why I wrote the book is I wanted the information that I have about money, sort of like the basic foundation. I wanted this to be able to be more accessible. I wanted more people. I wanted more women to get it. I wanted more women physicians to get it. That's why I wrote the book so that, you know, someone can pick the book, read it within like a couple of days and know that they have something tangible that they can start building from. That's the whole point of the book. So that was the external reason why I wrote the book. There were some internal reasons why I wrote the book as well. And in general, whenever I'm talking about doing things like having goals or whatever, it is so important for you to have both the external goal and the internal goal. The external goal is the people that I want to help, the women that I want to impact, improving the gen next generation of women physicians, helping the people that are that have been unfortunately stormed by traditional financial advice and education and it's not working for them. Those are the people that I'm here to serve. These are the people that are like, you know what? Sometimes I feel like banging my head against the wall. I People keep saying it's all math, but I'm not getting it. Like you are the people that I'm here to serve. And so that is the external reason why I wanted to do this book. But the internal reason why I wanted to do this book is number one is I wanted to give, right? I love giving. Giving is what I do. It's who I am, to be honest with you. And so this is another way that I could give and leverage my writing without needing to exchange my time for helping all the time. So now that I've written the book, hundreds and thousands and you know tens of thousands of people can read the book without me having to sit down and talk to them one on one. Yes, we have a program. We cannot serve every human. We cannot serve every woman. Our programs are paid programs are specifically for women physicians. So this is a way for me to be able to give to the global, like the larger world out there. So that's one of the reasons why I did that. The other reason why I did was I've had this thought for a long time that I'm a bad writer. <laughs> I've had this thought and I've tried changing my mind, working on my thoughts, making them empowering and all that stuff, but it keeps coming back. And honestly, there are times when you change your mind about things and there are times when you just change whatever that thing is. So for me, writing this book is my way of once and for all getting it down and just saying, you know what? We are great at this. We're doing a great job. So 
that was some of the reasons. The other reason that I always tell people to is I'm a huge fan of ownership and building assets. My goal is for more women to own things, have ownership of things. And as part of that, owning a book, writing a book is part of the assets that I'm building that is going to continue to give me a return on my investment of the pain that I put into it, the love and the sweat and all that stuff that went into it and I get to have that return on my investment. So those are some of the reasons that I did it. But overall, the main goal is I want more women to be free. I want more women to have the power of their voice. I want more women and women physicians to know that money is something that they can do. And if they've been struggling, it may not be their fault. It's because they've not been taught the way that we should be taught. So if you listen to this episode and you haven't purchased the book yet, stop right now, go to Amazon. It has the potential to change your life. And the the feedback that I've been getting, you know, you can go on Amazon and read some of them, but the private ones that I've been getting are like amazing. I have people saying, you know, they're stayed up all night so they can read it. I had someone say, you know, she was on page 40 when she messaged me. And for her, this was the first time she had ever found herself like validated by a financial book or represented by a financial book, right? I have people telling me things like that hypothetical situation you you mentioned. That case is not hypothetical. It is me. You read my life. Like you're looking like it it has been mind-blowingly amazing and humbling. And I know that this book is going to do what it's meant to do in the world. So go check it out. So the things that I want you to keep in mind is this. If you are someone that knows that you want to write a book, do it. Like you can, (laughs) you know, one of my clients, Dr. Manisha said something. She said, you can try what you want to try and avoid your dreams, but it's going to keep coming back to you. So if you've been getting that urge that you need to write a book, it's time for you to just get over it, get it done so that you can move on to other things because it's not going to leave you. It's going to keep coming and you can keep pressing the snooze button or you can do what I do and just get with it and figure out how to do it in a way that works for your life. So in terms of timeline for me, I decided that I wanted to write this book about a year and a half ago. So at that point, the question was, number one, is this something that I want to write myself or not write myself? Because you can hire ghost writers, people to write the book for you. They will interview you. They will empty out your brain and they will be able to get the content out. And there's nothing wrong with that. No shame in your game. In fact, the author of Who Not How... Uh, Dan Sullivan and his co-author, that was like a classic example of how sometimes you need to just get things done if it's going to help people. The worst place it could be is in your head, waiting there, hiding there, not impacting the world. So if you need a who in order to release the book into the world, yes, please do it. No shame in that game. But that's the first question that you want to ask after you've decided that you want to write a book is, do I want to write this book myself or do I want to find a who that's going to do it? That's why it's good to clarify your goal, because for me, my goal was really clear. So in order for me to actually knock it out once and for all, the fact that I'm not a bad, good writer, that, you know, that sentence in my brain that's been stuck there, it's almost like, you know, PTSD from college, sitting down in the bathroom and crying over English papers. I did excellent. I got an A in the English class, but I cannot get that memory out of my head. So essentially you need to decide what your goals are. And that's going to make that decision of whether you want to write it or whether you want to have someone write it straightforward. The other thing to keep in mind is if you write a book, there's a very good chance you will write another book. So if you're like, okay, I would like to write this book myself. However, the practical part of my life is that I cannot, I'm having a hard time creating the time to be able to do it myself. That may be another reason for you to consider who that can partner with you. So again, I decided that I was going to write the book myself. And One thing about me is when I make decisions, I want to move forward with things. And the reason why is I don't like holding on to stuff and just having it loom over my head because I believe there's so many amazing things that I want to create in the world. So I want to just do what I need to do, get it done so I can be free for the next thing that wants to come into my life that wants to express itself. So for example, I wrote this first book. I know for sure that I have other books in mind that I want to write. I have about two other books that I'm thinking about and I'm going to decide how I want to release them and when I want to release them into the world. But literally I knew that I wanted to get this book out to help the people that I wanted to help. And so my timeline was get it done and get it done and make it good and get it done. Okay. So that's number, number one was figuring out what your goals for the book is the outcome you're looking for. And then number two is 
sort of like whether you want to write it or not, whether you want to write it yourself or you want to have someone do it for you. And then number three thing or the next thing is, okay, now that you've made that decision, do you want to publish yourself or do you want to go the traditional route? I did not consider like the traditional finding like a formal publisher. I kind of did what was maybe a hybrid where you can find companies that can help you through the process. They have editors, almost like they have coaches to make sure you're on timeline and all that stuff. So I did not consider the traditional publishing, you know, pathway. I kind of did that hybrid model. And the company that I use, I really like them. They're called Scribe. They've done a great job throughout the process. And so I decided to go with someone. There are some people that may choose to write it themselves and find an editor, like an individual editor or an individual book coach or book writing coach. Those are things that are available as well. So you get to really decide for yourself what do you want to do? What is going to work for you based on what you want to create from it? And also what kind of resources you're choosing to commit towards it. For me, I liked the company that I used because I even went to their workshop because remember that one of the thoughts that I had was that I was not a good writer. So I literally flew in the middle of the pandemic, went to Texas. I think it was like four days or so, whatever number of days, but we sat down at this workshop where we're like brainstorming and getting started in a room full of other people that were out, you know, hopefully authors right now, but other future or current authors and just brainstorming all that. So I did that because again, I wanted to do a great job. And part of me was proving to myself that I could actually write a good book. So that's a decision you want to make for yourself is that route, traditional, self completely, or you want to do more of a hybrid. There is cost to whatever you decide. So that's something that you need to consider. Okay, so that's that. Writing the book was hard. It was hard, and I'll be honest with you guys. The content was not the hard part. It was the maintaining the momentum of writing it, right? When you're writing a book and doing something that is a long project, there are times when you may get tired. And I don't like reading my own thing that I've, like, I don't like, I don't even read my own emails that I write many times. Like, I have to be intentional about doing that. So the idea of, like, writing and reading and rereading and reading in my own book was like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to pull my eyebrows out, <laughs> which I didn't do. But the beauty of the people that I worked with was that set that expectation that there are going to be times during the, you know, your writing cycle when you really are in this pit of hell where you're like I just cannot push further and there were times when I questioned myself where I'm like do I really want to do this this is hard doing the editing you know I have my work as a GI doctor I have my kids I have my husband I have myself I have my siblings I have money fit MD we have our real estate and the other hats that I wear so being able to like get that time I really did need accountability and so you know that is something that the company that I use had they had accountability but I also had friends that kept me accountable to where I'm like okay this week I'm doing this right check up on me make sure I did that so that's a beauty of accountability and that really helped me in terms of making sure that I got the stuff that I was trying to get out done so that's something else to keep in mind that was helpful for me. But eventually I was able to make the push to finish in the book and going through the editing. So what we did was I did an editing process and they did also multiple editing processes as well to make sure like the stories were connecting, the stories were not redundant. English is my second language. So checking for typos. I hate um, exclamation marks and all those symbols, whatever they're called. So I needed somebody else to make sure that I was actually putting a question mark and the semicolon and all that stuff that people <laughs> say saves lives, right? So essentially that was what the company did for me. So the process of starting writing the book and doing the editing and all that took about a year or so. And then now the once you have a date that the book is going to be coming out, the question now is going to shift to how do you want to get this book out into the world? How do you want to share it into the world? Because writing a book is not good enough if no one reads it. Again, depending on your goal. But for me, my goal is to get this book into the hands of every woman physician so that we can have the tools that we need to be financially free and liberated and be the CEO of our finances. So for me, in order for me to be able to create that, I had to make sure that it actually was going to get into the hands of the people. So the company that I use they have some marketing stuff that they recommend they will teach you some baseline work but again my thought is as an entrepreneur I've spent that knew nothing about money years ago I knew nothing about business up until a couple years ago I've spent a lot of money 
helping myself be a better marketer. So I also wanted to invest that skill set that I now had into my own book. So the question I had for myself was, how do I want this to come out? I found out that my book was going to be released on the week of my birthday. And that was amazing. It was not planned. And when I found that out, I'm like, okay, what do I actually want? And my thought was, I want to celebrate this with a party. I want to have a party. I want to have women physicians come hang out with me. We teach, they learn, we celebrate, we party it up, and we really celebrate this milestone. That was what I wanted. And in fact, the job of my team was I literally told my team that their job was to make sure that I did not tone it down. Their job was to make sure that I celebrated. And I I mean, I got everything that I really pictured that week to be. It was celebratory. It was fun. There was teaching. I taught some of the women in my wealth community, the money coaching school for badass women physicians. They also came and like shared their stories, which meant they were inspiring people and teaching people. And then um, we also had lots of gifts because when you go to a party, well, if you go to a Nigerian party, you want to have some souvenirs to take with you home. So we had... 39 giveaways that we did and the giveaways we give were so amazing it was like autographed book we're going to be sending those out some people got target gift cards starbucks gift cards our wealthy life cards which are not available anywhere you cannot buy them anywhere i made them myself they're amazing and life-changing based on what i've been told by women physicians we get in those for our, our people as well and then also my sister company which i haven't i don't think i've told you guys i don't know have you have i talked to you much about it Anyway, so I have a business called Soxy Doc, which is where we make personalized socks for women physicians as a way of helping us be comfortable during all the times we're on our feet, but also empower us. So they have like really badass things on them, like that's Dr. Badass to you. You know, I save lives for breakfast. If you're interested, go check out our website. It's Soxy Doc, so Soxy, what a play on like sexy, but like S O C K S Y doc.com go there go buy yourself some socks go gift other people's socks um it's something that i care deeply about and part of our mission is to always give you know of where we we're receiving so for every three pairs that we get we're donating a pair so we're donating a pair to a member of our displaced community so go check it out if that's something that you're interested in but we are we give some socksy docs as well which i'm super excited about i cannot wait for the doctors to be rocking their socks Anyway, so just deciding for yourself what you want that week to look like. And the other benefit of having the party was we're celebrating, you know, people also going to get the word out, tell other people about the book so they can also get the word out as part of the marketing. Because again, my goal is not just to impact the people that I know, it's to impact the people that you know and to impact the people that you know. So people were doing things like buying and gifting it to other people. And so if you listen to this podcast and you've loved the book, that's something that you can do. Imagine if you bought nine copies of the books and gave it to the fellows that you know eight copies of the book and left it in the physician lounge at your job like the key is we need to get this information out by empowering people empowering women and part of this is normalizing conversations about money and having zero shame zero guilt about learning about money and the fact that we all need to be done with broke forever we need to equip ourselves and so that we can live the life that we want so that's the marketing piece that you need to figure out for yourself. One thing that other people have done is people have done things like physical lunch parties where they have people come in physically and hang out with them. Um, we've also had people do things like tours. So right now I'm on a year long sabbatical. So the idea of doing a tour within the U.S. was not really something that I wanted to do. It wasn't going to work with my goal for this year. But if I wasn't traveling for a year, I probably would have considered doing like a tour, go to different cities and meet the Money Fit MD larger community everywhere and party it up. And maybe that's something we're going to do in 2024. But for 2023, that's not something that's possible for us right now. That's not something that I'm choosing to spend my time on right now. In terms of physically traveling, it would be international travel for me. So I don't want to do that. But you need to decide for yourself what is going to make sense. And when it comes to bestseller, because that's something that comes up a lot, you know, people say, and this is true, you cannot write a book with the only goal of being a bestseller. That cannot. Like, because if that's the only goal that you write in a book for, if you don't make it, you're going to be heck of disappointed. And you don't want to do all the work that you've done and now be disappointed to the point of not getting the word out on the amazing resource and asset that you've created for the world. So part of doing this is making sure that you get the, the you get the word out, you get the information out and figuring out a part that may, a path that makes sense for yourself. 
there are different kinds of bestsellers and there are different bestseller lists. There's New York Times bestseller, there's Washington Post bestseller, there's Amazon bestseller. They have all those bestsellers. I honestly didn't spend too much time learning because I just wanted to get the word out. I wanted to get the book out and I wanted to help people, but I knew that the velocity was going to be important. So some people that are trying to do like New York Times bestseller or really want to market things to like physical bookstores like Barnes and Nobles, what they will do is they will tell you to pre-order the book, right? And so if you're someone that's have friends that are writing books, it's it's helpful to ask them if they want you to pre-order the book or not. So people that may be trying to do things like a push to physical stores may want you to pre-order the books because then you're telling the stores that there is going to be a demand, we're going to be needing books, so we're worth stocking up, right? And that's something that I learned from the podcast and people that I've published that I've learned from. So some of the resources that I used when I was learning where um, Amy Potterfield, so she just did her book, and I believe it was episode 545, was really good. That's something that we can include in our show notes, but go check her out, Amy Potterfield, 545. Um, Entre MD, Dr. Una, big shout out to her. She also had an episode that she wrote about marketing a bestseller, and I believe it was episode 205 on her podcast, Entre MD podcast. So go check that out as well, because I think it's something that would be helpful for you. Uh, Rachel Rogers was also someone that I listened to. I couldn't find an episode that talked about specifically her book lunch, but I just listened to a lot of her, you know, a lot of her podcasts and interviews around her book lunch everywhere. And I kind of put all those pieces together that I'm sharing with you guys today. So those were some of the big people, some of the bigger, um, sort of like the main places I should say that I got some knowledge from, and then I figured out what was going to work for me. Like the life event that I did was something that was going to work. It's what I do anyway. I like doing life events virtually where I bring women together, teach within a short period of time and just really help us, you know, have fun, learn money, get coached. And that's what we did, you know, during the book launch that happened last week. So again, I want you to map out that marketing for yourself and keeping in mind that marketing is something that's going to be lifelong or in terms of the lifelong of your business. I literally have people that wrote books like 10 years ago that I'm just hearing about right now. So the key is write the best book that you can write, make it an asset, help the people that you want to help, like have your goals and is your goals met? So for me, even if I did not get the bestseller, which I did, we were able to get it on the first day because y'all went all out and bought the book because you're excited about it. You're excited about the movement. You're excited about the knowledge. And I want to thank you for that. Um, but the key is knowing what your goals are and making sure that it's external and internal. So if I did not do the bestseller stuff, if I did not meet that, sorry, for those that are watching on video, this it's gotten a little darker. So the light is like, and my back is shining. I look like a star. <laughs> But y'all get what I'm saying. Just listen for the important stuff that you want to get from this and ignore the star that's shining in my face right now. But um, anyway, so that's the key. Market the book in a way that is authentic to you. Get the knowledge out to those that you want to serve because ultimately those internal goals are the most important thing. So even if I did not make a bestseller, the key was I was going to already be fulfilled because I wrote the book, right? I'm celebrating that. I'm getting the information out to people that need it, right? I'm celebrating that. And now it's like, it's going to unlock even some other things. Of course, there's a brand awareness part of it, but there's also just the fact that I get to help more women all over the world, right? I have people from Canada. I mean, actually inside our money community right now, we have people from Canada, from Thailand. I've had someone from Nigeria, uh, of course, different parts of the U.S., Hawaii, right? Um, those are some of the places that I've had people, sort of like members of my program. Uh, with the podcast, we listen to all over the world, which is pretty awesome. And now for the book, the goal is to be able to get this book into the hands of women physicians all over the world so that we can build wealth in whatever culture we are, whatever country we are, regardless of what their currency is, it is possible for them too. So those are some of the things that I wanted to share with you guys. I do hope that this is helpful. When I was trying to write my book and publish my book and market my book, this was the information that I was looking for. I had to bring a lot of information from all different sources to create it, to do it. So I figured if I can share this, I hope that it serves you. So I hope it does. And if this has helped you, if this has served you, I would love it if you left us a review. That would be my my kind, sweet, sweet. 
pretty please <laughs> ask leave us a review it helps other women find us right my goal is for us to empower women physicians everywhere i cannot do it alone it's going to take all of us so when you leave a review that helps when you share the episode that helps when you buy the book down with broke a woman physician's guide to more money and less hustle and leave a review that helps and when you buy gifts for your resident for your fellows for your friends when you have a book party a reading party all that stuff does help so i'll take that as a thank you all right love you guys congratulations on the book you're gonna write and i cannot wait for you to send me messages in a couple of weeks or months letting me know that this helped you in your journey to writing your book all right guys i'll talk to you later bye-bye <laughs>